Okay, just want to look at some of the work around Kafka APIs. There's the sort of four main groups, plus there's the client admin API, as well as support for some of the legacy producer consumers. And there's also a REST API, which comes with the connector or connect API. And we can see this over here, which is the interface to and from sort of databases or files for that matter, uh, as we'll prove. So we're going to bring in and bring a connector uh, API in. Uh, we can that will bring with it in addition a REST API which is 8083 which we can then investigate that using Postman which is what we're going to do. Okay so what I have running here is the classic uh, producer consumer so these are console based so they're sitting here on uh, uh, one of my Ubuntu machines and if I start messing around with the producer by putting alarms in then they should appear on the consumer sort of almost instantly. Well, I'll put clear in there. That's just about incorrectly, but hey-ho. See? Takes what you put in. Good. Right, what we're going to do is bring in uh, a third screen so we can have a little bit of a play. We are where we should be, the Kafka directory. If we go into config, we can see there's a number of config files in here which we're going to have a play with. We're going to have a play with the connect uh, that's what we've been playing before, sorry. So we'll have a look at the, uh, yes, the uh, connect file. Where has he gone? There it is. That's the beastie there. In fact, we'll have to use two files um, just to get the thing rolling. So we'll actually look at this one as well. So we'll use the connect standalone as opposed to the connect distributed. So I'm just going to have one instance rather than a distributed instance of the API. Um, and then I need another file which is telling me where, where to get the source information that I'm then going to push into and where do you want me to push it to. So if we'll have a look at the first of those which is the connect standalone properties. So if we just simply cat that. There's not a lot I need to change in here to get this working. Um, you'll find there's a lot of hash stuff at the top coming all the way through. This is really the field that I had to change. I had to change that from localhost to an IP address and port number which represented one of the brokers actually working, which was my broker zero. So that was it. I didn't change anything else in here. I just kept it as is. So that's fine. The second of the files that we need to have a look at is the source. Where, where, where are you going to get the source from? And I'm going to get it from a file as opposed to a database. So I need to edit that file as well. So if we go and have a look at it, what you'll see is that I've got a file, um, so it's a file source as opposed to a sync. So there's a header information coming down through, then there's this around sitting in the class and uh, we can see that it's a this will be pertinent because you'll see this in Postman later. So that's the name of the connector. So what we've got underneath this then is the topic I'm going to send it to and this is what I'm going to send it from. So this is actually the source. It's a source file. So if I come back out of that, because I haven't put the full path name in, so it must be in the Kafka directory. So if I have a look in here, I've got a file called text2. Well, text I want to send to somewhere, supposedly. So if I look at that text2, it is a log file. So that's a log file that's been written locally, it could be a syslog file that's been written locally. And then while I'm using that as a source, I'm now I'm now saying any changes to this I want to appear. So let's go and nano that file. So if we text to nano it, let's come down to the end. Let's uh, uh try try again. Let's see if we get it spelt correctly this time. And you can see, hopefully, when we do a control X exit and yes. So now we're going, to ex we're going to commit that change to the log. We'll see that that change appears here as well. So you can see that it arrives with its schema. Um, which this is this is an interesting point because I've seen this before. That the T's missing. There's a little buggy thing in there somewhere. Let's go and try it again. So let's just say that um, server down. OK, Control x and yes. And you see we've lost the first letter again in there. 
Okay, it's not appearing anywhere else, so it, it is gone. So do it again. Oops, that was for another exercise. <laughs> Takes two. Uh, and what we'll do this time is we'll lead it with a return and a server up. Ah, we get it all this time. So, well, ish, of course. So I, I lost the, uh, the, the, the the space there, which is probably just a, a passing error or something of that ilk. So it's just lost the first character each time. But hey ho, saw that before. But that now is another source that is coming into uh, into our Kafka and then being consumed by the appropriate consumer. So that's now being uh, committed to the log and the log was my second topic which is the one that we're looking at here. Just to prove that if we start running it off again we can see that the topic here is my second topic. Okay so it's from the beginning so I get everything all the way down through and that should include the other alarms. And there we have, we've got the server up and down. Yeah. Ah, the, this information here is interesting because that's actually come from another log. Uh, which, uh, oh, sorry, another text file which I had before, which was text, funnily enough. Uh, and it just caught up with itself because that got a little bit uh, screwy and has come in afterwards. But we've got the data there ultimately. And that's another thing about ordering. The ordering, as, as far as this is concerned, is just the order that it's presented with is the order that it goes in. So if it's not successfully entered, then uh, then that's up to us uh, <laughs> to to uh, to check, I suppose, or applications running external to Kafka to check is probably more the point. Right, let's bring in Postman. So I've got a Kafka collection here. The first thing to do to prove that it's sort of open is is to come in and maybe have a look at the connectors. Um, that's a that's a that's a good possibility. Um, in fact, I think you can actually go further back than that and just do a request. So a GET request, no authorization required on this one. Although, obviously, you'd want to secure that normally. And there we go. So the version number and this commit value here is what we get. But if I bring the connectors one in again, and I'll know how to drive this properly. So connectors and send that. What we can see here is that it comes back with local file source. That's the name of the connector. That was in the config file that we used for this file. Yeah, that's the file source. So let's let's have a look and see what we've got against that uh, local file source. And we can see against that we've got uh, the incoming file is text2 uh, and the so that's the file stream source and we can see that the output the topic is my second topic uh, and we can see then this tasks against a particular connector and the task ID. So if I bring up and look at tasks now and we can see the tasks we can see we've got a task ID of 0. If I put 0 in there uh, and then do something like status we can see that the status is running. Let's just get rid of status and see what that does for us. I thought so. So you can do a number of things against them. We can look at the config so this is against the local file source again. So we can see that's stripped that down to the sort of in and then the out. We can look at the status. So we can see what's going on there. Again, back to tasks, just to bring it back into the equation, get rid of that. Back into tasks, so we can see the, the task ID there. Uh, and then we can look at the task ID and its status. So again, we can see it's running. Um, other things that we might get out of this uh, could include looking at the plugins. So let's have a look and see what we get here. That was the 8803. So if I just put in here, uh, and really we're looking for the plugins. So let's say get again, and it's connector plugins. That's it. And send that. Oh, no, that 
Oh, it did work this time. Okay, I'll let, I'll let it go. I'll let it ride. I did have to sort of do that the first time uh, for it to, to find it. So that we can see then he's identifying the uh, plugins that are available at this moment in time as a result of this connector. So I can save that uh, and I'll put that in as connector plugins. Well, I could spell plugins and we'll save that to Kafka. Good. So that's my Kafka collection building up a little bit uh, as a result of the REST API as produced and provided for by that connector that we have running. And it's still running in the background. So again, if we were to go in and make some more changes uh, to that, uh, that particular file. So let's take the server down. and commit that change and we can see again the server is down I think we got this okay this time the server is down so that got everything so um, there we go that's using the connect API in Kafka <laughs>